no well uh thank you uh hussein uh that was uh extremely enlightening i think that some of the framework for uh the foundation of physical economy is uh, becoming more clear these are uh, scientific concepts i underline this is not ideology this transcends ideology it is the foundation for ironically as professor glenn deason said the american system was built on the idea of western development of the united states exactly what china is doing now in xinjiang and tibet where i have personally visited and seen these are scientific concepts and they embrace the idea of global development of elevating human society and continuing a process of increased development and productivity which has no real limit except to the degree that we break through in understanding the possibility for exploring even beyond our own planet in generations that will be coming uh this is something the chinese are already doing in terms of exploring the far side of the moon uh and bringing back samples of uh what we know is helium 3 helium 3 is a resource that is not available and on the earth's surface because the atmosphere and the earth prevents it whereas on the moon it does not and this is a resource which is essential in the development of fusion technology which is a form of nuclear technology that would provide virtually unlimited energy not alone for energy production but for travel in uh ultimately in space uh, uh on a more practical basis uh in addition uh, uh my remarks i i i will make now but uh i apologize unfortunately for the technical problem to professor ding i as my colleague says we will publish his remarks because it's very important that he is speaking from the standpoint of a expert in china as to how they are moving forward as my colleague uh, elaborated and this is very important for people here in the west to also understand that there is a history of economic development which once had a fundamental aspect of driving western development economy that is no longer being applied and if we would start to apply that and end the game of casino monetary speculation which is collapsing in any event we could join hands together with china in transforming the world economically and that should be the perspective that's win win but it also has a certain moral aspect which is often left out when people talk about economy as if morality and human uh, a commitment to what we could call the common good has uh a, a, a no place or a minimal place in economic thinking it absolutely does have and it does not contradict the foundation of improving conditions of life in fact it contributes fundamentally to it uh i will mention one thing which i think is quite interesting just as a fact of china's perspective in high quality development this is from the actually uh, hamilton center of industrial strategy uh it's from information technology and innovation foundation it's a new report reveals that the us is up to 15 years behind china in nuclear power development China has 27 nuclear reactors currently under construction and the average construction timeline for each reactor 
is about seven years, far faster than other nations. And it intends to build 150 new reactors between what was 2020 and 2035. So they are also a lead, China is leading in the development and launch of cost competitive uh, small nuclear reactors. Now that is the innovation that led the United States in its foundation to become a great developing manufacturing nation, which had the perspective of aiding, as uh, Glenn Deason pointed out, not alone its own internal improvements, but improvements in other parts of the world. The problem came up when the imperial interests of the British to dominate and then corrupted the United States after World War II to adopt the same model that we have been operating on a speculative, non-productive perspective that is failing. And rather than working with China in their success, they are threatened by the idea that China is doing what is naturally scientific and beneficial. And when we return to our own positive history, we have no problem working together. That's science. That's not ideology. It has nothing to do with if you wish to be a socialist or another uh, form of political thinking. And that should be what we take out of this and hopefully elaborate and engage more experts and more scholars in opening this kind of dialogue, uh, even in the best sense here in Sweden and other parts of Europe, and eventually being able to bring these ideas into the mainstream, into the mainstream media for an, a free intellectual debate and discussion. Now, the only thing I will add is something that I think is actually quite significant in this concept, which is the, uh, the person who has most actually been the greatest influence on my thinking and also on the thinking of the gentleman, Mr. Lyndon LaRouche, who has uh, been the latest modern uh, elaborator and creative thinker of economics from the United States. He has passed away, but his ideas certainly are to be studied, understood, and evaluated for what they are. But what inspired Mr. LaRouche was the thinking of a philosopher and a polymath uh, of uh, uh, born in Germany at, uh, well, at that time it was the Holy Roman Empire, uh, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. And he wrote an, a text which has actually the beginning of Mr. LaRouche's book, which Mr. Ascari referred to, uh, so you wish to learn all about economics. It's called Society and Economy. And I will just read uh, a brief portion uh, in this short work and in another longer essay, Gottfried Leibniz developed a scientific conception of Christian economy. In this particular essay, Leibniz argued that the entire purpose of society is to release the artisans from their misery. To accomplish this, Leibniz proposes that society play a positive role in fostering a harmony of interest among merchants and artisans through the development of national industry. Uh, he speaks about the moral aspect of civilization in the form of what characterizes the fundamental of the human mind, what is called the creative, what we call the creative principle, that human beings are not like animals. They are unique in their capacity to develop expressions in the form of new innovations, but also in the form of cultural contributions, great art, great um, music, 
and expressing and being able to transmit great discoveries from one generation to the next. Now, Leibniz understood these ideas also, not alone from the vantage point of the nature of the human mind, but also from the standpoint of how and what is the nature of the universe in which we live, which has harmonic orderings that are part of a reflection of the human thought process. And in that sense, when we behave less than creative, we are degrading our capacities to the level of beasts. And this is unfortunately still a problem in terms of the present status of what is operating as political uh, policy in uh, the world today. This is a way, This the these pioneering discussions that we have taken up of elevating and highlighting the foundation, which I encourage everyone to join us in further elaborating and studying. Because out of this, you get an idea that human development has a universal perspective that we can all participate and contribute to. And there are criteria for how we can approach this. I think that uh, we have uh, succeeded quite well in uh, the all of the uh, contributors and the speakers in uh, laying the groundwork for this. I want to thank everyone for their contributions to this discussion and I think that we will now have the uh, opening possibilities for all of the participants to uh, be able to raise questions. And uh, what we will, when we do this, we will no longer record the uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 webinar, so that everyone who has questions and wants to explore or uh, ask about some of the points that have been taken up, uh, can do so and feel free that you will not have to be seen in any public context. 